السلام عليكم <تصفيق> بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم أني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي جزاكم الله خير for coming may Allah reward you all it's a Sunday night please forgive me as Sheikh um, Muhammad just uh, explained it was really challenging to get a day that we both are available and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen so please forgive me I know it's a long weekend but ma la yudraku kulluh la yudraku julluh as we say if you cannot do it all don't leave it all so alhamdulillah rabbil alameen again jazakum Allah khair lovely masjid may Allah fill the masajid with barakah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who fill the masajid with barakah we fill it inama ya'muru masajid Allah what I want to talk to you is the title, and I really need you to think of the title. I mean, many of the things you hear is you probably have heard it again and again and again. The question always has to come to everybody. And please, and I really you know, ask you sincerely, brothers and sisters, if I have say something you disagree with, please feel free to correct me. Every year we hear the same thing. Every year we hear the same thing about Ramadan. Every year this masjid, I am sure, and every masjid in the LA area and in Orange County is full of people. Am I correct? And you barely, if you come late, you barely can find a place and everybody enjoy the imam reading. And when the last 10 nights and everybody's crying with the dua al and this is all beautiful, right? What happens on the day of Eid? as if we did nothing for 30 days. As we did nothing for 30 days. Am I correct? Back to the same thing. Whatever I did before Ramadan, I'm doing, look at, and, and again, we really need to be honest with, with ourselves because we will not change. You look at how we go to the Eid, Salah, the way we park, the way we greet, who do we greet, who we don't greet, how do we look at people, how do I dress, do I listen to the khutbah, do I really change, do I really establish this relationship with Allah 30 days, three zero, day in, day out, I'm fasting, I'm struggling, I'm praying, I'm reading Quran, I'm doing all these things. Why didn't I change? Let me ask everybody, and I want to see hands here, how many of you confidently say that I am definitely a different person from last Ramadan? Confidently. Again, I can't put you on this on the spot because if you were in this small classes I usually give, I would have asked you and tell me, show me. May Allah make it true and put barakah. But give me one example. I'm, I'm going to do it here. Anybody from the sisters or the brothers, alhamdulillah, there were many hands. What was it that made you raise your hand? Something practical. I don't want titles. You know, I was like, I am a more muttaqi. And I was like, really? MashaAllah. Give me an example. So give me an example. Alhamdulillah. So I have more resilience. I am praying more since last Ramadan. Again, I'm not going to go to the details, but in general. Why I'm saying this? There is about three weeks to Ramadan, roughly speaking, right? What is your goal? And don't tell me I'm going to fast. Everybody will. And if you cannot fast, you're going to pay money. I'm going to come to, Ramadan, to the Taraweeh. Everybody does. I'm going to finish the Quran. Almost everybody will does or will try. What will make you special in the sight of Allah from everybody else in this room, let alone from every Muslim out there? That's what I need. When I said I, Allah, and Ramadan, I normally analyze even titles. Who are you? When I said I, 
who am I? And I'm not talking about my name, what do I do, where do I live, how many children I have. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking who I am, and please listen to me, in the sight of Allah. Allah now, the Sheikh just shared with you, Al-Ihsan, and ta'bud Allah ka'innaka tara, fa'illam takun tara, fa'innahu yaraak. You all know it. You worship Allah as if he's seeing you, and if he doesn't, if you are not seeing him, he sees you. So he's seeing me. Yes? Everybody? Do you have any doubt? Alhamdulillah. What do you think he's saying about you and me? Is he going to look at me and he's going to say, Ni'm al-abd, innahu awwab. What a servant of mine she is or he is. They always return to me. Am I? Can I say it confidently? I would love to say yes. If I say yes, I'm a big liar. I'm talking about myself. So the first step in preparing for Ramadan, there is external preparation. For example, you haven't fasted since last year. Make sure this week you fast a day or two to get yourself ready. You haven't, did any, haven't done any qiyam, any night salah since last Ramadan. Do at least two or three this week and the week after because it is not a switch. That tomorrow is Ramadan, you turn on the switch and suddenly everything changes. Nothing will change. So I need to get ready. That's external. And subhanAllah, because of the barakah of Ramadan, we all get more energy. Sometimes we even look at ourselves and we say, I don't know how I'm doing it, but it's, do, it's happening. I'm working and I'm preparing uh, the iftar and then I run, take the children, go to the masjid, come home at 11, and then I go to sleep a few hours, then I'm up and then I do suhu. And you say, subhanAllah, I don't know how I do it, but I'm doing it. The barakah of Ramadan. That's external. This is everybody. What will make you or me different in the sight of Allah and on Day of Judgment? Don't settle for, let's just get to Jannah. That's not the ambitious people. Nobody just settle for a one-bedroom apartment in this life. True? No. You're a student, it's okay. I got my first job, I need to move. Now I got a promotion, I need to buy a house. Till when I'm going to live in an apartment. Don't we say that? There's nothing wrong with it, as long as everything is halal. Why in Jannah not the same thing? If I want to be in the highest level, Ya Rabbi Ameen, all of us, I have to do something externally and more importantly, something inside me. Many people don't have it. That's what made Sayyidina Abu Bakr different than anybody else. What did he say about him? مَا سَبَقَكُمْ أَبَا بَكْرٍ بِكَثْرَةِ صَوْمٍ أَوْ صَلَاةٍ He was talking to the companions, including Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Ali. And he said, Abu Bakr did not became where he is right now because he does more psalm, more fasting, and more prayer. Something resided and lived in his heart. That's the first thing you need to look internally. What, who are you with Allah? What do you have inside you for Allah only? Make it practically easier. And I'm going to ask everybody, but don't answer me because that's between you and Allah. But go home and answer this question. What did you give up? What did you give up of something you love and you have access to it? But you gave it up for Allah. Like you're going to give up your food and drink in three weeks for about 12 hours roughly for Allah only. That's why we are fasting. But what did you give up from this dunya, let alone internally, for the sake of Allah? You. You need to define who are you. And again, I'm talking about internally your relationship with Allah. What do you do extra between you and Allah that many people don't do? That's me. Then the most second important question. 
Who is Allah? And I really mean it. And I want to hear a question. And I don't want to hear the 99 names of Allah. Because that's the usual answer. Who is Allah as Samia? Who is Allah al Alim? We all know that. Who is Allah in your life? And I really need an answer. Yes. Your creator. As a, your, how old are you? Five. At a five-year-old, this is amazing. At a five-year-old, beautiful. Ten years old, even nicer. Because if I ten-year-old, I know Allah is the creator. Allah is the creator. Allah is the creator. Then this is not my phone. This is Allah's phone gave it to me. This is not my water. This is he gave it to me. So at this age, if every child, Muslim child, wherever this he or she live, knows this, we are in a very good start. Now I need the adults. Who is Allah for you? Who is he? And I don't see a hand. That's the names of Allah. And I said, this is what I said. Don't give me the names. Names we all know. And if I want to get into this detail, you will know how much we know it. But in reality, may Allah forgive me, number one. Do I really know Allah is my sustainer? I'll give you an example. And I'm going to give an example related to women. If I believe in my depth, in the bottom of my heart, Allah is the sustainer. Then when I leave an interview and they didn't give me the job, why do I say they didn't give me the job because of A and B and C and D? My name is Muhammad, I wear hijab, they didn't like my accent, or I didn't graduate from this or that. Why? Then I know Allah is the sustainer, but I'm not practicing this. Sh the first thing should come out of my mouth is what? My sustainer did not want to give me the sustenance through this job. Did, did, you, did you all get what I'm trying to say? So back again, who's Allah for you? And where do you want to be with him in Ramadan? There's people, they will not be able to come to Taraweeh. Simply, they work night shifts. They work night shifts. And this is their source of income. They're not going to quit. They have to take care of family. Islam tells me they need to work. So these people are going to be less than me if Allah wants me to attend Taraweeh. So who is Allah? Anybody? Yes, please. Okay, I'll take it. Allah is everything for us. I love it. Allah, I will add one word if you allow me. I will say, Allah should be, should be everything for me. Should be. Is it true? I'll, really? Every single minute? Again, I'm not, I'm not questioning you. May Allah make you stronger. Could be. I don't know you. But I'm t t talking in general. Is Allah everything for me? Is Allah before my job? Allah before my college? Allah before my family? Allah before my beauty? Allah before my career? Allah before my rest? Allah before food? Allah before my coffee? Allah is before my wealth? Yes. If that's how it is for everybody of us, we will never disobey him. We will never, we should be, but we are human, we have desires, and in our daily life, if you look around us, and when you start thinking and looking inward, not outward at people, inward at me and yourself, I'm going to say in my daily life, I'm feeding everything before I feed my relationship with Allah. Am I right? Am I right? 
24 hours a day. Remove seven hours you sleep. And even the sleep can be for Allah, but let's just leave it, right? So you have 17 hours. How much of the 17 hours is for Allah? Now you can tell me uh, my work is ibadah, right? Everybody knows this word because it justify a lot of what I do. Excellent. Is it true? Absolutely it can be. But is it really my work is ibadah? In every bit, in every moment in my job, I don't disobey him? Then it becomes absolutely an act of worship in everything. Everything. It is time for my break. I look at my watch. No, there's two more minutes. He's watching me. I am going for a meeting, and I don't want to go for the meeting, and I'm going to say, you know what? I got stuck in traffic. Are you stuck in traffic? Did you see my point? Who is Allah for you? And what is your relationship? You need to know it now. It's, it's absolutely fine. If I'm going to say, Ya Allah, and I say this a lot of the time, you know how weak I am. And you know how far I am from you. And you know how much I really want to get close to you. Ya Allah, help me. That's beautiful. But I need to start before I get to Ramadan. And in a second, I'll come to Ramadan. I need to know where am I and where do I want to be and how Ramadan will help me. I don't want this Ramadan to be the habitual Ramadan, I call it, the usual, again. And I don't want it to be something that will not change me. Ramadan is, you know what they, what they call Ramadan? There's so many parables, what they say about Ramadan. In your relationship with people, Ramadan should be like Sayyidina Yusuf with his brothers. You come to Ramadan, forgive everybody, don't worry about what they did to you. Alhamdulillah, Allah is forgiving me every minute, I'll forgive everybody. Throughout the whole Ramadan, that's going to be my motto. And I leave Ramadan, I go to Eid, and I'm so happy seeing everybody. Nothing in my heart against anyone, and I'm like a newborn person. That's one of the goals of Ramadan. If I go through this, then I learned who is Allah. I'll take you through one of the names and then see how when I know the name well, I'm going to change. One of the names of Allah is Al-Ghafoor, All-Forgiving. Everybody knows that, right? Do I practice this character of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my daily life? Am I forgiving everybody? For no reason. They don't deserve it. Because that's when you talk to people and say, forgive him, forgive her. They didn't mean it, but they don't deserve it. I'm not talking about deserve. I deserve to be a person who forgive. Because Allah forgave me. How many of us have missed Fajr Salah in your life? But he's still feeding me. And he's still giving me the house I want, and the child I want, and the masjid I want. Do I deserve it? Do I deserve it? But he gives it to me. So why can I not do it with people? For him. That's the relationship with Allah if you know who is he. If you know who is Allah, everything else becomes I don't want to say insignificant, but I will say less significant. Less significant. I'm not, never, ever should come out of my mouth, let alone in Ramadan, what people will say about me. It should be what Allah will say about me. When you are standing here in Taraweeh or there, and you came early, and you sat there, and you want to enjoy it, and then the masjid becomes so crowded. And you, for some reason, Allah made you look at the door or make you look at the door. And you see somebody came in and that person is dying to get in and looking. Will you get up and give your place to that person? Everyone looking at me, what is she saying? Because if I know Allah is al-Kareem, if I know Allah is al-Kareem, I know it. 
I don't know it. I know it. Allah is the generous, the real generous. Then I'm going to say, let them come. And then, of course, shaitan in me is going to come and say, but where are you going to pray? And I, immediately I'm going to say, the kareem will find me a place. People will look at you and say, you're crazy. There's not a single place outside. If I know who's Allah, I'm going to say, the kareem will reward me. Whether I prayed it here, or I prayed it there, or I prayed it outside, or I went home and prayed it. Because he knows I gave it up for him. Not because I know you or I love you or you helped me or you're my neighbor or people will say she's generous. I gave it only for him. That's the relationship that it should be. The relationship with Allah is not you're going to be in that corner or you're going to be here and you're going to pick up your Quran and you're going to read it and it's going to be the khatma race as I call it. Oh, how many, how many times you finished Quran? Five times. Oh, I did seven. And you have no idea what you read. And it didn't move you a bit. Not a single shed, not a single drop of a tear you shed. Not because the Imam is reading beautifully, but because you felt it. You felt it when Allah says, Ya ibadi, my servant, does it move you? Do you ask yourself, am I ibadi? Am I the servant of Allah? Deeper, my beautiful sisters and my dear brothers, we need to dig deeper. We need to move from this custom casual Ramadan, custom casual fasting, custom casual taraweeh. The Imam is reading, Qul ya ladina asrafu ala anfusim, and I'm in the bag, get tired, and I'm sipping my coffee. And this is not Ramadan, this is a habit. And Quran did not yet penetrate your heart. Penetrate our hearts. It should. Me, Allah, and Ramadan. Who am I? How am I going to get into Ramadan? In what? Abdullah? Subhanallah, he's going to look at me and says, wow. Versus he's going to look at me and says, till when? When will I see the change? How many Ramadan I will give you? How many masajid I'll give you? How many lectures I'll give you? How many imams? And when, give me a deadline. Imagine Allah say this. What I'm going to say? Nothing. Because there's no excuse. So know who you are. And definitely know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ والأرض جميعا قبضته يوم القيامة والسماوات مطويات بيمينه For sure Allah said this three places in the Quran same start ما قدر الله حق قدره They didn't know the real value of Allah or who is he or they did not honor him the way he should be honored three times he said it and every time he followed it by a statement that if I really read the Quran it should have moved me completely when I enter this masjid, and again, everybody, do I feel this is his house? Or it's IIOC, ICOI, or Rahma Center, Garden Grove, names? Or it is his house? There's a huge difference when I say a house versus your house, let alone when I say your name. No, 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 this is not this. It is Fatima's house. And if you only know what that means, you're telling somebody. Come in the masjid with the reverence. It is his house. It is his house. Like Sayyidina uh, uh, Zain al-Abideen bin Ali, the great-grandchild of Rasul when he made wudu, people look at him and they see his face changes. Why? It's wudu. And they asked him, why your face changes? Changed. It's wudu. And his answer is the person, the servant of Allah, who knows who's Allah. And he said, looked at them and says, do you know between whom I'm going to stand? 
do you know between whose hand I'm going to be standing? That's salah for him. Salah for you and me is duty. Alhamdulillah, I prayed. And then I go out and I speak for hours with whoever I am seeing. Or in the masajid that they do 20 rukat and I leave after eight because it is not the sunnah. And then I go out and I start talking. That's the sunnah. We need to change. We need to welcome Ramadan. And I am maybe not yet in a different state, but for sure I want to be different. You need to name Ramadan for you in a different name. For example, I sinned a lot last year. And I'm going to say, Ya Allah, I want this Ramadan for me to be Ramadan al maghfirah I want this Ramadan to be the Ramadan that you will forgive me. And when I say it, I mean it. And I'm going to do it. Which means I'm going to be very different from everybody else. Or this is going to be the Ramadan of Qurba. This is the Ramadan that is going to get me close to Allah. And I mean it. Which means I'm going to do things very different. Very different. So here you go. Who are you? Learn about Allah. And what is Ramadan? Why Ramadan? In our daily talk, what's so special? What's so special? Let me ask you, all of you, what's so special? Everybody is now counting the days when is Ramadan coming. Why? I am asking, why? What's so special? Anybody from the youth here, on, mashallah, all of you, what's so special? Why you're waiting for Ramadan? Let's say I'm non-Muslim, I look at you and say, what is the big deal? It's another month. What are you going to tell me as a Muslim? Why Ramadan? What's so special? Anybody, just say anything. I'm sorry. I'm looking for Allah reward, okay. And now think I am, I know nothing. I'm not even a Muslim. And I was like, what is this? Wherever I go, people talk about this month. What's, so, what's the big deal? What are you going to tell me? What you will tell me is what you feel. What you will tell me is what it means for you. So what is it? Ramadan, what is it? Month I'm going to fast. And I was like, oh, we fast too. So many other people fast differently. But what's so special about it? Anybody? Yes, please. Okay. Brother Isa, can we have another mic? Because I want everyone to hear it. Do we have another mic? Because this is what I wanted to hear. May Allah reward you. Because the, it's not only what he said, it's the way you said it. And this is something we all have to pay attention. It's not only what we say. It's how we say it. Is it coming from, is it truthful? Or is it something I read somewhere? or just something I memorized, my mom taught me. Uh, I looked it up and I found it and I liked it, or I really felt it. So it is the creator of everything, the one who can choose whatever he wants to choose. It's mine, not mine. He chose this special, and if I'm wrong, correct me. He chose this special month to give it to special people, to make them special at the end of it. Right? We have it? Yeah, alhamdulillah. Please repeat it because you said it way better than I did. But this is one of the ways. Did I memorize? <laughs> We're about to find out. <laughs> Bismillah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah. Uh, the creator who has created everything chooses special things from among his creation. He has chosen from among the people, special people, for example, and has made them prophets. He is the creator of time, and he chooses special times, and he grants them blessing, 
and they're special to him. So we look forward to this time because the Creator has designated it as a special time. And as such, we're seeking that reward and the special blessing from him in this special time. So it's the Creator of everything chose a time of the year, time of the day, time of the night, and made it special. Who disagree with this statement or who agree with this statement? Show me hands, because I'm going to ask you a follow-up question. Now everybody put their hand down. Why this statement is very true? Because he said it in the Quran. What did he say? الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. The month of Ramadan is the month that the Quran was sent down. Why not another month? Can Allah have, if Allah wanted, couldn't He send it in Hajj, ذي الحجة, شعبان? Why? And what is the Quran? Again, change it to the words of Allah. It will make you feel different. It's not the Quran. Of course it is. But to me, it's the words of Allah that he chose to be sent down in this month. Meaning, you are, let's say, co cooking or baking a beautiful cake, right? Or you want to buy a special beautiful car. But you want to make it even more special. So you're going to choose what? Or let's say your children wants to buy you the car and you always want it. So they decide, you know what, Father's Day. Or Monday, Daddy doesn't work and he usually are very relaxed. And when he sees the surprise, he's going to be even happier. Did you get my point? So Allah chose Ramadan on a spiritual level. And nobody asked, why Ramadan? I have no, I can't even ask the question. Because who am I? to ask Allah why you do this or don't do that. But what is he telling me? It is very special. I chose it, he, subhana, to send my word, right? And why? And why? Why did Allah send me the Quran? You all know, to guide me. It's in the verse. So here I am, when Ramadan comes in the day tomorrow, when we all look for the announcement, I'm not going to say, okay, alhamdulillah, Ramadan, tomorrow I'm going to be fasting, lovely, I'm going to be going to the masjid, and I'm going to be spending, oh, I love taraweeh. It's all beautiful. It didn't change us. Because as I start saying, after 30 days of fasting, taraweeh, Quran, day of Eid, see what happened. I need to say, aha, he gave me another opportunity. As the hadith the sheikh started with, the person who died in jihad and the person who lived one year longer. And that's why the Sahaba used to say, Allahumma ballighna Ramadan. Six months before Ramadan, they make this dua. Ya Allah, make me live. So I see Ramadan. And everybody should do this. Don't you guarantee you will see it. Can anyone guarantee I'm going to be here day one praying taraweeh? Only he knows. Ya Allah, Allahumma ballighna Ramadan. And you say it and you mean it. First. Second. What is your to-do list with Allah in Ramadan? Different than anybody else. I don't want you to tell me I'm going to again fast to read Quran and Taraweeh. Alhamdulillah. But what is it special you're going to do this Ramadan? I'll end up with this because we need to get ready for Aisha. There's three kinds of people who fast. Three kinds. You read it in the books of spirituality. They say people, the fasting of the general, the ordinary people. And there is the fasting of the special people. And there is the fasting of the special of the special صَوْمُ خَوَاصِ الْخَوَاصِ Is this is clear to everybody? Alhamdulillah. What is the difference between this? What is these names? Everybody is fasting. Everybody is not eating from this time to this time. What is the difference? These are three levels. صَوْمُ الْعَوَامِ I'll give it to you. Everybody. Those who will abstain from food, drink, intimate relationship, 
from this time to this time, right? Everybody. And if you are not fasting because you have an excuse, then you are with them. Because if you can, you would have done it. Easy? Yes? What is those special that they will do more than the first group to make them special? So everybody, again, think of this masjid. In another three weeks, when you come in and look around you, I do this every time I'm in Mecca in Ramadan, especially before the iftar. And I say, Ya Allah, all these millions have fasted. Who's different? Who's special? And everybody in Mecca, everybody is doing salah with the imam, everybody did tawaf, yani all these acts external. So the fasting of the special, what do they do differently? Add to the, what the base is. What is it? Who can tell me? Yes, please. I'm sorry? Uh, say it with Arabic, I'll translate. With your heart, elaborate. Because these are actions. I have to do A, B, C, D, or not do A, B, C, D, and I'm going to have the fasting of the special. Then I'll come to the fasting of the special of the special. Who can tell me this? I'll give you a hadith of Rasul Salam. Inshallah, it's going to explain it easier, and then I'll come to it. Rasul Salam was told that two women who were fasting, right, and they start throwing up, and blood came out from them, right? And they went and said, they wanted to know, is their fasting valid or not? If I'm remembering the story correct, correct me if I'm wrong, Sheikh Muhammad. And then he said, and he was told, why is something different, if I'm remembering well, because they are vomiting blood. What do they do different? Is everybody ready? He was told that these women, well known to backbite. And then they, he said, tell them Allah does not need their fasting. The special fasting, when you stay away from all the sins, what is the point? I came in here, fasted 12 hours, ran to the masjid, three hours I am here. And as I entered, I looked and I found this woman next to me. And I was like, no, let me move to another place. Why? Why did I feel this way? Because I think I'm better. And I want to go to and pray next to somebody else that I think we have more in common. I'm arrogant. That's a major sin. Let's alone I look at you or you look at me and we start talking about this and that. Sawmul khawas, when your tongue fast and your eyes fast and your ears fast and your hand fast and your legs fast and of course the private part. What is the point you're fasting? And then after iftar, you sat on that couch and you start looking at this thing on TV or that thing on social media or on online. Or I'm listening to this or listening to that. You need to fast from haram. And I'm not talking about halal meat or, or, halal, or the biha, which we are, alhamdulillah, I'm talking about every haram thing. You come here running to pray, whether Jumu'ah or fasting or Taraweeh, and you blocked someone here. And then you stay talking to your friend or you stay talking to your friend and there is a person behind you needs to leave ASAP and he or she are, is stuck because of you. You just disobeyed Allah. Because you hurt a believer. Or somebody wants to pray and you want to focus. These are very blessed days. And then you are talking with your friend. And there is nobody else in this masjid but you. Let alone you are flipping on your phone. And she wants to focus in her salah. 
you want to have the special psalm, your heart has to fast, your eyes, your ears, your tongue, your hand, and your legs. Now, the special of the special. If I, Allah give it to me one day, I want to die after, because that's it. When you fast from anything and everything other than Allah, you're not going to be focused on what I'm going to eat for iftar, who I'm going to meet, uh, what is my plan for tomorrow. All the focus will be, have a, am I pleasing you? Am I doing the right thing? Help me, Ya Allah, forgive me, Ya Rabbi. Even your dua will be different because you'll be focused on him. If you're going to at least learn this, at least learn this, beg him, Beg him, and I didn't say ask, I said beg him, because this is very difficult to give me one day, one day in this coming Ramadan, to fast of those, the special of the special, one day, Ya Allah, then, Alhamdulillah, then believe me, when you go for Eid, you're a different person. I will end up with this story, I lived it in Haram. But there in the last 10 days we were in Atikaf and there was a woman in front of me. I don't know the woman in front of me or back behind me. But anyway, I see her, the woman, 10 days, her and the Quran, Hafidah, of, of course. You can see she's reviewing, nothing, Salah, stand up, nothing, nothing. Yani, nobody talked to her, she does, it's not the issue. Ya Allah, the day they said tomorrow is Eid. And in, when you are in Haram, they, there is no announcements. Especially that time, there was not even phones. It was like about probably 15 years ago. But how do we know tomorrow is Eid when there is no taraweeh? There is no Salatul Qiyam, Yarhamukumullah. So we know tomorrow is Eid. This woman start crying. Wallahi, like she lost her child. I couldn't believe it. I was in awe. I've never seen it in my life. Ordinary woman, you look at her, you think, I and you, all of us much better than her. She starts crying and she was just looking at me and says, in the Arabic language, it's done. This is how she was saying, it's done, khalas. That's what I want and you want. That Ramadan will be different. Ramadan is my beloved coming. Ramadan is my son who I haven't seen for 10 years. Ramadan is the house I wanted to buy for the last 30 years and I worked very hard and now they gave me the key and I'm going to go in. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this, Ya Rabbi Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen to the words of admonition and follow it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us able to practice what we learn. I seek refuge in Allah. I remind you of him and I forget him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I have said anything correct, it's from Allah and Allah only. And if I have said anything that is not correct, it's from me, my ignorance, and the impact of shaitan and my nafs on me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us live to see Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sins. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi tasliman kathira.